Hello, this is Jason, and I'm starting at my destination of most of my videos. I'm already at my little picnic table bench, and I perfectly timed the sunset right at the tips of the trees. Beautiful. Glorious. sight to behold so I'm just sitting here soaking up the view taking a quick breather <clears throat> just enjoy that sunset for a moment and I got here in good time I was actually talking to my mom on the phone on my walk here. <clears throat> so that's why I didn't record on my way here, but I think this is better. Start the video out with the best part, which is the sunset in the park. So I left at 5.45, which got me here at 6.30. So I should have plenty of sunlight to walk home without my headlamp because I actually didn't bring it. <laughs> uh, let's watch the sun go down just a little bit more. And this is uh, day two of my fast and it's actually going good i really haven't had major hunger pains i've not had a lot of uh, weight loss either though i'm still at 269 so maybe uh just one morning i'll wake up and a few more pounds will have fallen off it's, it's got to all be uh tea weight so there's nothing else going in there tea tea and air what I'm living on. <clears throat> All right, let's start making our way back into the forest. And I only brought one camera today. As we walk forward, the sun will fall behind the trees. And there she goes, another day around the sun. Got a little squirrel. We only have a finite number of days, only so many sunsets. We're going to be able to see. You ever wonder how many you got left? I do. He's going into a Bigfoot territory. And I actually found when I searched for Bigfoot, search for Bigfoot Brushy Creek Trail. Someone, I think it was like 2018 maybe, recorded a Bigfoot. There was a Bigfoot sighting. So that's why they put those signs up. I was wondering why, why there'd be Bigfoot. There was actually a video went viral. Bigfoot Brushy Creek Trail around Rock. And it's, it's about as good of a video as any other. Bigfoot video. They're always out of focus and low res. Looks like it's filmed with a potato. <laughs> uh, why is it anytime they film a UFO or 
Bigfoot. It's not with the best, best uh, imaging technology available. <clears throat> Although in recent years with those military videos of the Tic Tacs that they got on the, the Go Fast video, those are actually pretty clear. But yep, on day two of week of my third week of fasting. So I've taken breaks each, the end of each week. First fast was five days. And second week fast was four days. And now I'm on two days. So I've already up to my 11th day of fasting in the past three weeks. So that's actually pretty cool. And I've only got one camera with me. I'm just, I have the Action 5 Pro. I just, I didn't even know if I was going to make a video. Because I was already on the phone with my mom. So I just grabbed one camera and walked out the door. <sighs> it seemed like I got here quick. Talking to her on the phone, it kept me busy. <clears throat> It actually makes time go by faster when you're having a conversation rather than just talking to a camera. Even though talking to a camera is better than just walking in silence, then it seems like it takes forever. I usually listen to like podcast or audiobook or just some music just to keep my mind distracted when i started back up walking i listened to the whole book of a uh, whole audio book of david goggins can't hurt me that's motivating i'd say if you uh get out and start walking while you listen to that audio book it's very motivating that guy you know, if you think your legs are getting tired or your feet are getting sore just listen to the stuff that guy went through and how he just powers through it very very inspirational can't hurt me <sighs> So tomorrow is the uh, Manjaro shot day. So even though these first two days haven't even been that bad, they're usually the, the hardest days <clears throat> as far as like hunger pains go. So like tonight will probably be the worst that it gets as far as feeling hungry. Then I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, give myself a Manjaro shot. And the hunger will go away and then that should power me through friday so i'm just going to friday 4 p.m and then get to eat and this weekend i'm going uh to a steakhouse with my friend misty it's her birthday weekend so we're going out for some steak might even go downtown Austin for a little bit. We'll see what happens. And I'll just eat this weekend. Eat whatever I want. Although trying to keep it as low carb as possible is better long term. I think it would be best if I just ate keto on the weekends so I keep my body in fat burning mode. Once you 
get out of ketosis, it takes like another two days to get back into ketosis. So you're really wasting two fasting days if you start, you know, breaking a fast and eating a spaghetti and bread, sugar. So maybe I'll, I'll try to behave. And if you can't be completely no carb, at least try to not go overboard. Keep it at least low carb. And then I'll see how long I can keep this up. I just booked my flight to Cleveland, Ohio the weekend before Thanksgiving and I'm staying for two weeks. So the week of Thanksgiving, I got that whole week off vacation and then I'm going to work from Ohio for a week and then come back. Not, not doing six weeks again this year. Six weeks in Ohio is too much. I think I'll be able to handle two weeks. That's good for good for the year. And I still have another week. So I think I'm going to book a trip to Mexico City. And that'll be my first solo international trip. I'll be sure to make a lot of videos about that. Eat some good Mexican food. And go see some sights. If anyone's been to Mexico City, let me know some cool points of interest to check out while I'm there. I'm sure they got some museums and stuff that's cool. And then when I come back from Cleveland, which is on, I think, December 7th, I'll only be back for a week. And then that's when I go to Bangkok for a month. So I'll be in Bangkok for Christmas and New Year's. Get to go watch the big fireworks right on the river. That's where I'd like to be. They have like this little tour cruise boat. I'd like to get out on that boat. It'd probably be pretty hard to do. Like right around the time when the fireworks are going off. See all the fireworks reflecting in the water. That'd be pretty cool. But, or on a, uh, at a rooftop, like a rooftop bar or something, would be a good place to see like all the fireworks going off all around the city. That'd be pretty cool. <sighs> and then when I get back from Bangkok, it'll be around January 15th. That's usually towards the end of January and the beginning of February. It's usually when I go on my Cancun cruise with my friend Jason and his family. So I'll probably do that again too. <laughs> so I got one, two, three, like four, four vacations planned by February next year. <clears throat> A lot of traveling, traveling with Jason. Those will all be on my Jason Michael Phillips main channel. So if you're not subscribed to my main channel, make sure you're subscribed. Links in the description. I put the link to my main channel in the description of all my videos here. Yeah. 
I don't know why you'd be subscribed to some more Jason when you're not subscribed to the main Jason channel. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and then it'll be back to the grind. Don't have anything planned after that. Then it'll just be waiting for uh, Bitcoin to go to the moon. <laughs> waiting. I'm hoping that Bitcoin's at least at 90,000 by New Year's Eve. And then hoping it's at 300,000 by November, I'll say by Thanksgiving 2025. That would be awesome. Awesome. And I'm still trying to think what I would do if it got there because probably best to sell like if it went all the way up to 300,000 it'd be best to sell if it hit that because that's like way over overbought because then in 2026 it should come down to like a hundred thousand and this is if it's following patterns of the last three cycles <clears throat> But the worry is, depending on who adopts it, because all of these institutional investors, if they come in and like pension funds start allocating one or two percent and pension, like pension plans and other retirement funds like Fidelity and BlackRock start making like pre pre allocated retirement funds to where if you put your money in a you know 2060 retirement fund that automatically allocates like one percent of someone's retirement plan into that fund and you know i forget what they call them they're just like target date funds is what they call them so fidelity and blackrock start editing target funds to where there's kind of like a higher risk or higher performance target fund that automatically puts like one or two percent into bitcoin and then people start dumping their retirement funds into these target accounts bitcoin could just keep going up. Like it could break out of that four year cycle. <clears throat> if that happens, it might not come back down. It might go to 300 and then just keep going up. <sighs> and the target is like a million dollars per Bitcoin by, I think it's, two cycles, so it would be 2032, 2032, 2033, should be $1,000,000 per Bitcoin. So knowing that, do you really want to sell when it's 300000 even though you know the next year it's going to go down to 100000 possibly, but by twenty. 32, 33, it'll be a million. That's what I've been thinking about. Because you could sell at 300, thinking that the next year it's going to go down to 100, and you'll buy back in. So 
So you'll be able to get three times the Bitcoin allocation that you would have had if you just held on to it during the dip. <clears throat> but then it could throw a loop if it gets adopted by institutions and pension funds. So maybe I'll do half and half. If it goes to 300, sell half of my holdings, hold the other half. And then you're only paying capital gains tax on half of it. That's another thing that you're going to have to pay capital gains tax on like $240,000 per coin in profits. And I think the first 90 some thousand dollars, you don't have to pay any capital gains, 0% capital gains up to $94,000, $96,000. But when it's over that, you end up getting bumped up in some brackets. And I think it goes up to like 10%. <clears throat> but even then, if you're paying 10% capital gains and it goes back, you know, it drops 66% which is kind of what it does after it goes through the super big run-up. At least previously. You know, you're still making out. I'd rather pay 10% than avoid, to avoid a 60 six percent drop <clears throat> here we go hit that guy off the pass <sighs> man my right foot i got blisters on top of blisters and i still got covered it up with the moleskin but Blister, blister, blister. I don't know what I could do to help prevent that. I guess switch up other shoes. I might put some uh, pressure in a different spot if I wore a different shoe. That could be what I do. I don't think I need the sunglasses. And this guy's really talking, really talking loud on his phone back there. So this uh, one camera selfie view <laughs> should give you more appreciation for my two camera setup. <sighs> Here I could turn you around and give you a view of where we're going. <sighs> be better than looking at my face. more awkward when I'm holding a camera and pointing it at people than just having one on my shoulder that's pointing at people. So this is like intentional. I'm intentionally filming. Or if it's on my shoulder, it's just incidental. <laughs> I'll turn it at myself. There's someone so I don't feel so Awkward. I feel like I'm sticking it in somebody's face. 
Oh. <sighs> so, then think about the plan. If it does go to 300, no guarantee that it will. <sighs> Some people are saying it's already reached its high of 72 and it's not going to hit break that again until next cycle but i think those people are crazy <clears throat> i don't think we've seen the highs yet and i don't think we will until after the election so we got less than a month and then after the election I think Bitcoin's gonna start skyrocketing, no matter who actually wins. <clears throat> Don't think it really matters because it's that's what it's typically done last three cycles too. Look at right after the elections, that's when it shoots to the moon. And we've had Democrats saying Republicans voted previous cycles and it just goes to the moon. Doesn't matter who. It's the uncertainty before the election that people have uh, their own personal biases of they're gonna wait until they see who wins after the election and then they'll buy. But there are people on, you know, Democrats and Republicans are both thinking that like, I'm not going to buy until, unless Democrat wins and other people think I'm not going to buy unless Republican wins. So there's people just sitting on the sidelines on both sides of the aisle waiting for the outcome. And then no matter what the outcome is, one 50% of people are going to buy in and that's going to cause it to go up. And then the other 50% of people that were sitting on the sidelines thinking that it's going to go to zero if the other other candidate won sees that it's not it's actually gone up by you know 20 percent and they're like oh crap i was wrong it's not gonna go to zero if the other person won <clears throat> and so then they fomo in and then now everyone's buying in so i think by the after between the when the end of the election once the winner is declared hopefully it doesn't it's not like another 2000 where hanging chads and <laughs> people have to wait for months to find out who won but if we find out like who won on election night which we should then I'm pretty sure that Bitcoin will be pumping by the end of the week. And then, so from November 6th, 7th, 8th to the end of the year, I think we're going to get up to at least 90,000. And it'll just keep going from there. Once we get some liquidity in the markets, Bitcoin loves liquidity. If we get some more rate cuts, some more free money, <laughs> the almost no matter what happens, it's good for Bitcoin. Like if we started going into a recession, then the Federal Reserve would have to cut rates. Like if they cut rates to zero, then that's free money for capital markets. So people like Saylor, Michael Saylor, would be taking out billions of dollars in 0% interest loans and buying Bitcoin with it as well as other people that are doing the Bitcoin strategy. And, you know, the Fed starts printing a bunch of money. 
then that devalues the dollar, which Bitcoin is the inverse of a devalued dollar because it's a finite supply and finite resources are static against a devalued currency. So the, the value of that static asset goes up in relation to the dollar value going down because it takes more of the devalued dollar to buy the static ac asset. <sighs> mm. I love talking about Bitcoin. <laughs> oh. Bow, bow, bow. Bitcoin is a big part of my retirement plan. I've not gone all in, but I've gone very deep. <laughs> uh, I just haven't put all my ba eggs in that basket. So if it does go to zero, my plan B and my 401k will still save me. And my house, my house is not currently in Bitcoin. So even if everything I got in Bitcoin went to zero, I still sell my house and live for 11 or 12 years in Bangkok off that. And that's if I just get 400,000 for it. I'm hoping that uh, as interest rates come down, that the value of my house will go up. Especially if uh, Kamala gets in and has that $25,000 house buying program. That'll just at least boost to 25,000 but it'll really put even boost it more than that because there'll be so many more people trying to buy houses that there won't be enough houses for them to spend their $25,000 down payment on. So house prices could go up 10, 20%. Now it'd push me back that's, that would put me back to where they were like in 2022. House prices went crazy around 2022 because there was such, there was a lot of giving out free money and that everyone was trying to buy houses and just put, they're trying to find ways, places just to put cash because feds print so much. If I can navigate, navigate this. Right. Halfway across. And I made it. All right. Look at the look at the skyline. Prettier than my face. So yeah, my the value of my house went up to five hundred and twenty-five thousand somewhere around May, June, 2022. And boy, oh boy, do I wish I sold then. So that's, now it's, I'd probably get like 400. So that's pretty, pretty big dip in value. And with that extra 125,000, that's a five, five years in Bangkok. <laughs> you 
you can get by like 25,000 a year. And not even get by, like get by well. That's over 2,000 a month. Get a condo for like 500 bucks a month. Food costs you like four or 500 a month. So there you're at a thousand. So you got like thousand dollar a month baseline for a place to live and, and food to eat. And then you have a whole another thousand dollars a month to spend on entertainment. Doing whatever you want. And that's a thousand bucks goes a long way on entertainment. It costs like Five dollars go to the movies. <clears throat> Still think about it. Bitcoin in Bangkok every day. Thinking about Bitcoin. Thinking about Bangkok. Thinking about Bitcoin in Bangkok every day. <laughs> And how I'm going to retire and get out of the rat race. Those are the main topics. So if you like discussing those topics, you are in the right place. Because I love discussing those topics. Let me know if you have any questions about those topics. I'd be happy to answer and elaborate on any of them. The thing that I don't know is, even though I do have faith that Bitcoin could hit a million dollars a coin by 2032, 2033, that it's still a risky asset, I'd say. So it's, once I actually retired, I don't have any more money coming in. Do I really want to risk the money that I have putting a large amount into Bitcoin being retired? Or do you want to play it safe? I mean, as long as I could get, there are like safe portfolios that I've looked at, like the Golden Butterfly, the Golden Butterfly portfolio and the, the Weird portfolio. And I've made up my own portfolios that have a mix of those portfolios, which is like a little bit of gold, a little bit of treasuries, a little bit of small cap value stocks, just like an ETF. Kind of diversify into different asset classes. Could throw some... Uh, real estate REITs in there like V&Q ETF and maybe just put in a small 10, 15% max 20% Bitcoin allocation Which when you're retired, 20% would be, I think, as much as I'd want to go. I don't think. I mean, there's still Bitcoin maxis out there that have 100% of everything in Bitcoin. And they, that's, they're just riding on Bitcoin. It just seems so scary to put all of your eggs in one basket no matter what it is. 
even if someone told you like Nvidia is a sure thing over the next 20 years it's just gonna keep going up and up which is probably true through the adoption of AI but I mean anyone could come along and I would say that buying an individual stock is more risky than buying Bitcoin because there's not going to be another crypto asset that replaces Bitcoin or gets more widely adopted than Bitcoin. That's kind of like it, it won that race, in my opinion. There can only be one Bitcoin. There could be a ton of other crypto assets that do other things like Ethereum with their smart contracts and building other apps on top of it and stuff. I mean, they have their utility, but they're, they'll never get more widely adopted than Bitcoin. And like there's a Bitcoin ETF right now and there's already going to be institutions coming in. Once that happens, the the uh, market cap of Bitcoin is just going to go to the moon. It's just over like one trillion now, which is still like less than 1% of the value of all the world's assets. So if Bitcoin just gets to like 20, 10, 20% of the world's assets are held in Bitcoin, that would be like 20 to 40 X from where we're at now. Which doesn't seem unrealistic. So I still have a lot of, a lot of faith, I guess I'll call it, that Bitcoin is going to be that widely adopted. You know, over the next 20 years, it's not going to happen overnight. But I do think it's going to happen. Slowly, then suddenly. And then when actual nation states start adopting it, that is even bigger than when pension funds start adopting it. Like when they start, countries start backing their currency or, or allowing it to be traded as a currency. We've already had uh, candidates in the U.S. talk about having a strategic Bitcoin stockpile. That will, if the United States does it, almost everyone else will do it. And I'm sure there's already a bunch of countries that are doing it secretly right now. It's not something you really want to announce that you're doing. But I think the way that the laws are in the United States, they would have to declare it. That would be public information. But there's other countries that are not as open as the United States. You could be doing it all in secret. But once the United States is actually doing it, everyone will do it. And what happens when, pe when you can actually print money and buy Bitcoin? You could print as much money as you want, buy as much Bitcoin as you want, but there's only a limited supply. So you have to keep offering it to buy it at a higher and higher price. And that's when there's 
hyper Bitcoinization is the term. When everyone wants to get in on the Bitcoin train, but there's not enough supply. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Mark my words. You'll come back and say, that's some more Jason channels, right? I should have bought some Bitcoin. And it's been just hanging around 60,000 for months now. It's just waiting to take off. Long accumulation phase. Well, I made it home, back on my street. So, thanks for hanging out with me. Listen to me talk about my favorite things. Bitcoin in Bangkok and fasting. I'm going to keep on doing this every day. And if there's any other topics you want me to talk about, let me know. I'm open to outside suggestions. If it's coming from me, it's going to be a lot of Fasting, Bitcoin in Bangkok, and some Vietnam in there, Southeast Asia, retirement, investing. That's what my, my brain wants to talk about, but I'm open to talk about other things. So just let me know. All right, here's my house. And um, there's my Google Fiber box in my yard waiting to be filled with high-speed internet. Please make it happen soon, Google. I'm bringing my garbage can. All right, well, thanks for watching. And be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Tell all your friends about this weirdo that walks and talks. <laughs> and, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Let's talk to you later. Take it easy.